G'day everyone, Tim from the vMix here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about PCI Express and why it's important to your vMix PC build. This is an essential topic if you want to have a capture card in your live video production. I'll be talking about slots and lanes and showing you an example of a motherboard like this one here. So stick around if you want to know a little bit more. We've been building some vMix PCs around here for the last little while so that we can use them for our testing PCs, our reference systems, and to replace some of our older machines like this one here. Now each time we put together a PC, there's a huge question that always arises. What capture card or cards are we going to use in it? We need to know this so that we can purchase a motherboard that's going to support the capture card. Now in order to use a live camera in your production via an SDI or a HDMI connection, you'll need a way to get that uncompressed video from the camera into your computer. Now this is typically done via a capture card that connects via PCI Express on your motherboard and makes the video available to programs like vMix. Now you can use USB or NDI, the capture cards will typically give you the best reliability and quality, especially if you have a PC with a motherboard with enough PCI Express lanes. You can check out our videos on capture devices linked in the description if you want to know a little bit more about what capture device will work best for you. Firstly, let's talk about slots. A capture card is installed to your motherboard via a PCI Express slot and connects to your system via PCI Express lanes. These are PCI Express slots on your motherboard. Now each motherboard will have different numbers, sizes and layouts of slots. Now if you have a capture card that you want to install, you'll need to make sure that you have enough slots on your motherboard for it. There are different sizes to PCI Express slots from by one to by 16 or even by 32 sometimes. Here's an image from the Elgato website showing the different sizes and I'll link that in the description if you want to take a look. Now here are some examples of the physical sizes. Here's a GPU which is by 16 and a couple of capture cards that are by 8 and by 4. Now the smaller ones will fit in larger size slots but the larger ones won't fit in smaller slots. So if you have a capture card you'll need to make sure that you have a spare slot for it on your motherboard and that it's going to fit in that slot. Your capture card manufacturer will let you know how big the card is and what size slot you'll need. Now typically your graphics card will require the first PCI Express slot here will have the biggest slot and the most lanes connected and the second slot here will typically have the next amount of lanes available to it. So this is where you would put your capture card. So thankfully we have multiple slots here that we could use on this motherboard. Now unfortunately it's not always the case. Over the years computer parts manufacturers have slowly been taking away PCI Express slots from motherboards. And to be honest, most PC users don't really need any extra PCI Express slots. As long as they've got a main one here for their GPU, you don't really need any. So I can kind of understand why they don't bother with any extra ones. Now we do get a lot of people emailing us about this particularly, and we do have a lot of people asking about pre-built gaming PCs for vMix, from places like Newegg, Amazon, and Walmart. Now typically gaming PCs are really good for vMix, but these pre-built ones on the lower to mid end don't usually have any extra PCI Express slots, meaning you can't have a capture card with them, which is a bit of a problem. So pre-built PCs will try and minimize costs and provide you with a cut down motherboard or an OEM motherboard, which doesn't have any extra slots. If you don't need to use a capture card in your production, no problem. But if you do need a capture card, no problem. So that's the first issue. Actually finding a motherboard with enough PCI Express slots for a capture card and one that's big enough to fit your card. Now let's talk about lanes. The second and biggest issue is the number of PCI Express lanes that are actually connected to the PCI Express slot by the CPU. Now motherboards can be deceptive because they look like they have three or four full-size PCI Express slots, but not all slots are created equal. You might have a slot that looks like it's by 16 physically, like this one here, but it's really only connected by eight lanes electrically. So even though it's a full size by 16 slot, it's only connected by eight lanes. Now this has been a really confusing topic for many years. So you really do need to dig into the specs of the motherboard to be 100% sure of its capabilities. The manufacturers will often advertise amazing features like three by 16 PCI Express. But when you look at the actual specs, Sure, there are three by 16 size slots, but they're only connected by eight or four lanes. So they're physically by 16, but they're not electrically connected at the same amount. This can make things very confusing. So for a quick example, 
This by 16 slot here is only by eight lanes. So I'm gonna go over that in a little bit more detail when we look at this motherboard. So when you have a capture card that you wanna use, as we mentioned in the first step, you'll need to have the right size for it, but then you'll also need to check the capture card to see how many lanes it requires, and then make sure that you have a motherboard that supports the slot size and the amount of lanes. Okay, so let's take a look at an example and go through the PCI Express slots and lanes on this motherboard here. So this is a B550 AMD motherboard, and it looks great on the surface because it looks like it has three by 16 PCI Express slots. Great. But when we take a closer look at the specifications page, we can see what those slots actually support. The first slot can be up to 16 lanes connected to the CPU. The second slot is eight lanes connected to the CPU. And the third is four lanes connected to the chipset. So there are a few things that we need to unpack here. The first two slots are connected to the CPU which is what we need for the GPU and the capture card. So having it dedicated to the CPU means that we can have dedicated data transfer for all of that uncompressed video. So that's really important to have it connected to the CPU. The last slot is connected via the chipset and will share lanes with other things on the computer. So don't ever use the chipset slot for a capture device, only use slots that are directly connected to the CPU. Now you'll notice that the second slot will share lanes with the first slot if you have a card installed there. With the GPU connected at a minimum Gen 3 PCI Express, but more likely Gen 4, having eight lanes will work fine with vMix and a capture card in this second slot. Most capture cards will be using older PCIe Gen 2, so the GPU will have plenty of bandwidth. On this motherboard, we could have our GPU in slot one and an eight lane capture card in slot two. So I could safely install a Blackmagic Decklink Quad 2 card here as it requires eight lanes for connectivity and physically requires a by eight or by 16 slot. So putting this all together, you'll need to make sure that your motherboard supports both the physical size for the card in the slot and the right amount of lanes connected to the slot. Looking at the specs page, we'll see the physical size of the slot is by 16. It supports eight lanes and it's connected to the CPU. So that's what we want for our capture card. Now, while we're on the specs page here, this motherboard has something that we do need to consider. Now, some motherboards will actually have different numbers of PCI Express lanes or differing PCI Express generations connected depending on the chip that's installed. So as you can see here, depending on what chip is here will depend on what generation is currently connected to that slot. So this is an important thing to consider as there's a lot of little things that might trip you up. For example, other ones might have motherboards like this here where you actually get different numbers of lanes depending on the CPU that's installed. So this is something that you might need to keep an eye on depending on what motherboard you have and CPU that you want. Now, as a side note to all of this, you can actually see the physical number of lanes that are connected electrically if you look close enough at the card. So if we try and zoom in here, you can see that this by 16 slot has pins connected halfway along the slot meaning that eight lanes are connected electrically. Now, unfortunately, you're probably not going to get these kind of zoomed in images on the manufacturer's website. So it's always important to check the specs page to make sure what lanes you've got connected to what slots. All right, so if you are looking for more PCI Express for your capture cards, then you may wanna look at high-end desktops or HEDTs. Systems that support the Threadripper CPUs from AMD can support up to 128 PCI Express lanes on some systems, which is totally awesome for lots of capture cards. Intel has an older platform called the X299 or X299X, which can support up to 48 lanes. Now, unfortunately, these high-end desktops aren't really used by a lot of people, so they are very expensive, they're hard to actually buy, and they aren't updated very often. I'm looking at you, Intel. So here are a few tips from me if you are building a consumer grade PC with off the shelf parts. I usually recommend for people to work out what sort of capture device they wanna use first and then sort of build their system around that. That'll give you a better idea as to what motherboard you wanna look for. Now, most motherboard manufacturers will offer ranges of motherboards with differing numbers of PCI Express slots and lanes. Depending on what brand it's under will depend on what sort of market they're trying to aim for and that sort of thing. Typically, the more expensive ones will be better configured for PCI Express, but your mileage will vary on that. Now, some chips also work on multiple platforms, so there might be a better option for you. Like for example, an X570 system might offer more than a B550. 
Now, typically most of the CPUs we recommend at vMix will have up to 20 or 24 PCI Express lanes. However, the motherboards will determine what combination they're in or what sort of capacity they're going to give you. So that's something important. Even though the CPU might offer you up to 24, the motherboard might not. So you always need to make sure that you check the motherboard specs to make sure it's gonna give you all the PCI Express that you need. PCI Express generations will determine how fast you can send data. So newer motherboards that we have in 2023 are gonna be PCI Express Gen 4 or 5, and they're really great at sending data super fast. The newer the generation, the faster it can send data. Unfortunately, the cards themselves will determine which generation is used. So typically newer graphics cards will be Gen 3 or Gen 4, which is great, but capture cards are only going to typically be Gen 2, which means they're super slow at sending data. Now we are hoping that in the future that all of these capture cards support the newest PCI Express generations, and that would mean that we wouldn't need as many lanes for transferring data, which would be great. Now we might even be able to get away with using chipset slots. Now, unfortunately, that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon, but I guess we can always hope for maybe in the future. So to recap everything, here's what you need to look for when buying a motherboard for your PCI Express capture card. Firstly, make sure it has enough slots and that the slots are big enough for your capture card. Secondly, make sure that it has enough lanes connected to the slots that you're going to be using and make sure that your CPU supports the configuration. You can check out your capture card manufacturer to see exactly what it needs. Thirdly, make sure that you have the lanes connected directly to the CPU and you're not using a chipset slot. And lastly, email us if you're not 100% sure about any of this. We've spent so much time over the years looking at motherboards, so if you aren't sure, definitely contact us with the motherboard that you have in mind, the CPU you have, and what capture card or cards that you wanna use with it. Just head over to vmix.com and then go to our support page where you can send us an email. We can't answer technical questions on YouTube, so definitely send us electronic mail. Now this topic can be a little bit confusing to say the least. So on our reference systems page, we like to list really specific motherboards that allow you to have a capture card. So definitely check that out before heading off into the wild west of PC part shopping. If you wanna read a little bit more about PCI Express and slots and lanes and connections and generations, I'll link a guide in the description on a website that I found that has heaps of great info. I'll also link the Wikipedia page as I'm sure I've got some info wrong in this video so you can read some more information about it there. I've done my best to hopefully explain how PCI Express works with vMix. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later.